Kabbalah, Session 3. In the first session, we discussed the emanations of nothingness in the realm of Atsaluth. In the second session, we discussed the fall of these emanations through the realm of Yetzirah into the realm of Beriah, or Eden, paradise on earth. In this session, we will discuss the Tree of Knowledge in the Garden of Eden and its role relative to the fall of man. To begin with, we see in this depiction four diagrams, all depicting the forbidden fruit on the Tree of Knowledge. From left to right, we begin with the seed inside the fruit, then the fruit itself, next the fruit without its skin, and finally the fruit split in half. First, we will examine the seed inside the fruit, depicted as a two-dimensional square, the shadow of a three-dimensional tetrahedron. Here we see a tetrahedron dissected into the now familiar ten sephirot emanations. The three corner points and the node in the middle correspond to the tetrahedron's four points and four sides. The six other points along the lines between these represent the six edges of the tetrahedron. This arrangement of the ten attributes is as a tetractus, to be read chronologically from top to bottom. This tetractus represents the seed of the tree of knowledge, which is foresight, and so in this diagram we see, just as Eve did, the first of the generations to follow Adam and Eve. This diagram, likewise, depicts the fruit of the tree of knowledge itself. Here we see the generations that followed Adam and Eve split into two lineages, the house of Seth and the house of Cain. Cain's line proceeds upward and represents the sons of God who came down and bred with the daughters of men, that is, those who descended from Seth, following the line downward and below. So we see six generations of immortals cohabited with eight generations of mortals. Just as Enos was the son of Seth and Lamech the name of the eighth mortal born, so too was Enoch the son of Cain and Lamech the name given to the sixth generation of immortals. Between these two the names reverse direction relative to one another in the manner shown. Here we see the fruit of the Tree of Knowledge schematically exploded to show separately its seeds on the left, its stem and skin in the middle, and its volume as a shadow on the right. The seed on the leftmost is Eve, perceives the volume of the shadow cast by the stem and skin. The seed inside the Fruit of Knowledge Eve swallowed gave her foresight and showed her that the division between her two sons in their first generation would last at least until the life of Lamech, six generations of immortals, or eight mortal generations later. Thus, here we see the fruit of knowledge schematically re-imploded, forming a cross-section or half of the fruit itself. We can see here the manner in which the poison entered the fruit the three layers of its skin, the realm of Atsaluth, were penetrated by the fang of the serpent, the Sephirot, to the core of the fruit, the realm of Yetzira, and into the seeds in the innermost world of Barai. From there the poison leaked downward throughout the rest of the lower realm of the fruit, the world of action, the world called Asaya. When Eve ate from this fruit, she swallowed its poison seed. According to myths, it was in that moment when the serpent of Satan tricked Eve into eating the forbidden fruit of paradise that Samael, the demiurge and creator of the four worlds of Kabbalah, declared himself equal to the immeasurable imperishable realms, the Gnostic phrase for the all-seeing Empyrean God the concept now of all or the most high. 
This was the moment of the shattering of the vessels, the fall of Satan, his angels, and mankind, all at the same time. Following Eve eating of the forbidden fruit of Eden, she then fed the fruit to Adam. However, before this they copulated, and thus when Adam ate the fruit himself, Eve was already pregnant with Cain. Following Adam eating the fruit, he and Eve came together again and conceived Abel. Thus Cain was born with Eve's immortality, and Abel was born with immortality and foreknowledge. To follow this second generation of offspring to Adam and Eve, we first turn our attention to this model for the Tree of Death by Steve Savedow. Here we are seeing an exploded stalactohedron, or as discussed in session 2, a hypertetrahedron, with one square or shadow of a tetrahedron above, and another below. The simpler form of the same concept as the Tree of Knowledge diagram of Hakabala represents a tree of death now, because for Adam or any of his generations to eat once more of the Tree of Life after the expulsion would cause them to surely die. Thus, this diagram depicts the fruit of the Tree of Life as opposed to the previous diagram for the fruit of the Tree of Knowledge the forbidden fruit in Eden. Thus, this shape is only a more complex form of the same model as we saw earlier representing the fruit eaten by Eve. However, this fruit is that which can no longer be intellectually apprehended by the generations of mankind. It cannot be grasped, because to understand it is to pluck it and to taste of it, to have gnosis or experiential knowledge of it. It is simply grown on too tall a tree to be reached now. Therefore ponder this model at your own risk. At the core of this fruit, though, is this model, which represents a method of time travel based on the right understanding of space as moving in one direction and time as moving in an opposite direction to this. This understanding should be considered extremely dangerous because, according to the myths of Kabbalah, the city of Enoch, from whence Noah hailed, was sunk to the bottom of the sea by the flood due to the immoral use by its inhabitants of technology taught to them by their gods. Again, we turn our attention to the model of the ten sephirot as circular emanations and the 22 paths on the usual tree of life expressed as the points of intersection between them. Here we see also the 10th Sephiroth circle encompasses the space of all the others, forming a torus around the 7th central Sephiroth. This model also reiterates the 10 attributes of the tetrahedronal tetractus model of the seeds given earlier. The seeds and the fruit of the Tree of Knowledge are the Ten Sephiroth emanations. Next, we review the model of the Seven Planets, the so-called interior seven attributes below the so-called tables of the Eighth and the Ninth of Hermes Trismegistus. Just as the Ten Sephiroth emanations are the seeds of the Tree of Knowledge, so too are the Seven Camia, the seeds of the Tree of Life. The ten sephirot are yielded by looking at a torus, or a hypersphere, from above its pole. The seven planetary dignities are shown here as along the edge or side of the hypersphere, as viewed from above its equator. Now we see the whole book of Raziel written by Adam in Paradise, describing all he saw and knew there, lost at the time of the expulsion, and returned to Adam by the angel following Adam's prolonged repentance in the river Gihon. The ten emanations are the central tetractus, including one emanation that is a zodiac of twelve aeons. Above this are the father god and mother goddess, and below are the four inner worlds of Bariah, superimposed above the seven latitudes on the globe of Asai. 